Okay, so welcome back to part two of my Lightwave 3D introduction. Um, here I'm going to just um, fill in a few of the blanks which I left in part one due to lack of time. Um, those being the basic viewport navigation tools and the backdrop settings. A few other settings such as glows, uh, lights, camera settings. Um, I'll try to fill all that in in this part of the tutorial. So first off you've got your controls here for the viewports. Uh, pretty pretty simple, standard. You've got the move button here, which you just click and then drag around to move your view, view around. And then you've got the um, zoom button. Click that, drag in and out, zoom in and out. And um, you've got basically the same configuration of buttons for each viewport. If you enter uh, perspective here, you have the rotate option to rotate your um, perspective viewport around. And of course, um, there should be an option here which allows you to move. Yeah, oh, there we go. That's it. Um, in the perspective viewport, if you use the move tool, you can actually move along uh, the horizontal axis. So imagine that'd be useful. Um, and if you right-click it, you can move along the vertical axis. And the same thing goes for rotate. If you right-click that you can rotate it um, you can rotate it along the vertical axis I think it is and for zoom it's essentially the same thing okay so next up the backdrop and um, to edit your backdrop settings you just head into the windows bar here backdrop options you can also strike F5 and here you can choose backdrop or you can use a gradient background so to add a backdrop you go to add environment textured environment or image world and this time I'll just go with image world and we will choose an image double click on it and load image let's choose something from pictures I probably should have gone with that and if we just go into our render tab now render frame you'll see it is rendering that as a panoramic image probably better off if we if we used a texture environment for this texture image load image or we've already got it there actually and projection type will go with spherical and render that hmm you'll have to mess around with this particular setting until you find what works for your specific image um, but yeah generally speaking you should be able to find it pretty easily that's something close to what it should look like um, anyway, let's move on to the rest of this tutorial. Next up is the camera and light settings. So you'll notice down here, down here at the bottom uh, left, you've got a selection of options, objects, bones, lights, cameras, and properties. Um, the way Lightwave handles object selection is it uh, groups them into, ver into different classes. So if I want to edit the properties or move around uh, an object such as the light, select lights and it will allow you to adjust the properties of lights we'll start off with cameras I've already given you the basic intro on the cameras here so I don't really need to go into detail, detail on that anymore um, just a couple of things I want to show you in here that I didn't quite get around to last time um, your camera type here uh, by default it comes set as perspective camera but you might like to set this to classic camera uh, for more familiar, should I put it, options such as anti-aliasing, you can now set to classic, enhanced medium. Generally speaking, that's the best. Um, and the rest of the settings pretty much remain the same. And um, but depending on your camera choice, you'll have different options available to you, like surface baking, uh, shift, real lens, perspective, and, and advanced, of course, which gives you uh, extra options if you need them. And so let's just head into the lights. So for lights here, 
you got the ambient color which is the background color the low level color and then you've got the ambient intensity which you probably won't want to set too high and then you get the current light which basically allows you to choose between lights in the scene to modifier modify and light type um, basically you can choose from the types of light which I showed which I had shown you earlier light color that's the actual emission color of the light and intensity which is the equivalent of 3D Studio Max's multiplier and then you can choose what it affects like diffuse map uh, pre-render OpenGL and the specularity of course you can also turn it into a lens flare if you want lens for options intensity fade off screen fade in fog fade behind objects and fade with diff distance and flare dissolve and there you got the basic uh, aspects of the flare such as central glow, central ring, red outer glow and glow behind objects um, then you got animal distortion and ring size and color etc and you've got your streaking on the flare, random streaks and of course you can have your um, lens reflections similar to, similar to 3 Studio Max um, okay so next we'll just uh, quickly show you the uh, animation options. So down here, got auto key, which usually you'd want to leave on unless you're doing something which you really, really don't want to be auto keyed as you're doing it, such as changing settings, etc., like that. And uh, for create key, uh, pretty much, if you're using auto key, you won't necessarily need to use create key, although you can if you want to specifically create keyframes. Um, just before you auto key something and of course you got delete key so delete the current frame the, the, the keyframe on the current frame I should say and you got the basic functions here like uh, return like just the beginning uh, wind uh, back one frame forward one frame fast forward uh, skip at the end here um, and you got to preview here make preview play free load save and preview options um, I think that's just about all the basics at the moment and of course in your file menu here you can load scenes uh, load items from it, load object, one object uh, load an object layer or load multiple objects and here you can save your scene import files, export into various formats and you can package your scene okay so I think that is just about everything um, for this particular tutorial so as a final note here, I would just like to say that the rest of the tutorials and work in progresses that I meant to upload recently, I'll probably get those uploaded next week once I get the new computer and set it all up and everything. Um, I've still got to finish that work in progress uh, motion picture uh, dry dock sequence recreation. So I have to get right on that. Um, so yeah, just a quick update and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.